Hey guys, welcome to another video of your favorite cloud learning platform, K21 Academy, where you learn cloud from the experts. In this video, we will be covering Azure Traffic Manager. Now let's have a look at the agenda of this video. First we will be covering what is Azure Traffic Manager. Then we will be covering Traffic Manager routing methods. And in the end we will be covering comparison between Azure Load Balancer application gateway and traffic manager. We have taken this clip from our step-by-step -step learning program on Microsoft Azure Solutions Architect Expert Certification. Now let's hear from our expert. So Microsoft Azure Traffic Manager allows you to control the distribution of user traffic to your service endpoints running in different data centers across the world. So Traffic Manager works by using the DNS to direct end user requests to the most appropriate endpoint. Service endpoints supported by Traffic Managers include Azure VMs, web apps, and cloud services. You can also use Traffic Manager with external and known Azure endpoints as well. Traffic Manager selects an endpoint based on the configured traffic routing method. Traffic Manager supports a range of traffic routing methods to suit different application needs. Once the endpoint is selected, the clients then connect directly to the appropriate uh, service endpoint. Traffic Manager provides endpoint health check and automatic endpoint failover. Enables you to build a highly available application uh, that is resilient to failure, including the failure of an entire Azure region. All right, so if, if you look at uh, the diagram that's on the screen right now, so you can see that the traffic manager distributes the traffic based on the routing method. So we will get to see what are these routing methods and how traffic manager is deciding to which server it should, or which server or which region it should uh, direct the request to. All right, uh, so we will go with the first one, priority routing. So when a traffic manager profile is configured for priority routing, it contains a prioritized list of service endpoints. Traffic manager sends all traffic to the primary, I mean, which the primary is the one which has the highest priority first. If the primary endpoint is not available, traffic manager routes the traffic to the second endpoint and so on. Availability of the endpoint is based on the configured status, whether it's enabled or disabled, and the ongoing endpoint monitoring. The priority traffic routing methods allow you to easily implement a failover pattern. Uh, you configure the endpoint priority explicitly or use a default priority based on the endpoint order. So what happens is, let's say you have the entire infrastructure in East US, and that is your primary location. And you have a similar setup in West uh, US as well, but that's the, the, the priority order, that's the second one. And you have a similar setup in uh, Central US as well. Uh, that would give you three regions, right? So let's go to the whiteboard, and uh, I, think, I think that would be the easiest way to explain this. All right, so let me create a new whiteboard here. All right, so in this is your East US. Uh, you have a, um, you have a load balancer here. Let's say, for example, you have a load balancer here. You have three VMs here, and uh, these are going to another load balancer, which has a SQL server in the back end so this is your setup in east us so let me copy this entire thing to this this is another replica of what we have and I'll just move this to the side. All right. So I'll just use a riser to erase this and this. And uh, this is uh, West US, and this is uh, Central US. 
So the priority given here is 1, 2, and 3. And I have a traffic manager here. Perfect. So the users are coming in, the endpoints will be going here, here, and here. Since the priority 1 is given to East US, all the requests will be directed to this region. And the users will be getting served. Everything will done. Let's say there was a flood or something, uh, a tornado, or something happened in East US. And this entire region went down. So what the traffic manager does is, it will check the endpoint, if the endpoint is available or not. Since this region is not available, it will go with the one which has the second priority, this one. So the request will start coming to this region. Let's say if West US is also down, then it will go to the third region because the priority is three here. So this is very useful in case of a failover pattern uh, where we will use primary routing. Sorry, priority routing. Uh, next one that we have is uh, performance routing so performance routing is a method designed to improve the responsiveness by routing traffic to the location that's closest to the user the closest endpoint is not necessarily measured by the geographic distance instead traffic manager uh, determines the closeness by measuring the network latency Traffic Manager maintains an internet latency table to track the round trip time between IP address ranges and each Azure data center. With this method, Traffic Manager looks up the source IP address of the incoming DNS request in the latency table. Traffic Manager chooses an available endpoint in the Azure data center that has the lowest latency for that IP address range that returns the endpoint in the DNS response. Right, so we'll see how it looks like. So I'm just gonna undo this, all these changes. Okay, so we don't have priorities as of now. So traffic manager maintains a latency table. Let's say my client is here, client. They are in the IP range 13.27.11.5. And based on this uh, latency, uh, traffic manager will calculate the latency to each of this endpoint. Let's say this one is 116 milliseconds. This one is 115 milliseconds. This is 110 milliseconds. So since this is the lowest one, this one is giving the better performance because you will get the response. This is a round trip time. So if a request comes here and goes back, that will be done in 110 milliseconds. So this on performance basis, this is the first one that's uh, traffic manager is going to pick up. Let's say this region goes down or something happened here. It will pick up the next one. 115 is the lowest one. So it will start sending requests to here. That's uh, all about performance uh, routing. The next one that we have is uh, geographic routing. So as the name says, uh, it's it's about the geography. The other performance routing, we, it is also about the closeness, but it's not the geographical distance. It's actually looking for the internet latency. Uh, but in geographic routing, each endpoint uh, with that profile needs to have a set of geographical locations assigned to it. So any request from those region gets routed only to that endpoint. Some planning is required when you create a geographic endpoint. A location cannot be in more than one endpoint. So basically what happens is I'll have an endpoint, if you look at the image, I have one endpoint which is for Germany uh, and there is another endpoint which is for the world. And there is a nested profile as well. So inside the nested profile I am using priority routing. So endpoint 1 will have the priority 1 and so what happens is the traffic hits the traffic manager. Let's say I am logging in from Asia, it will hit the nested profile. In Asia. I am using a priority routing inside that. It will go to the first one. Let's say the first one is down, it will go to the second one. If I am not logging in from Germany, Mexico or Asia, it will go to the endpoint two. If I go to and if I log in from Germany, that will directly go to endpoint one. So this is about the geographic routing. The next one that we have is weighted routing. Uh, weighted traffic routing allows you to distribute traffic evenly or to use a predefined weighting. In the weighting traffic method, you assign weight to each endpoint in the traffic manager profile configuration. 
the weight is an integer from 1 to 1000. This parameter is optional. If omitted, the traffic manager uses a default weight of 1. Higher the weight, higher is the priority. So here um, we have uh, three regions, I mean three endpoints where weight is 50, 5 and 50. Since region A is down completely, the one with the highest weight is 50. So that will get the that will be the one which is serving the request. If that goes down, five is the one. So higher the weight, higher the priority. All right. So let's see what we have in the next slide. So uh, this is just a comparison of what we discussed so far. When to use Azure Load Balancer, Application Gateway, and Traffic Manager. So Load Balancer gives you L4 routing, and Application Gateway that's in uh, L7 and traffic manager is just a DNS uh, traffic control based on DNS resolver it will uh, route the traffic protocols uh, it can be used with TCP and UDP application gateway is uh, just for web traffic traffic manager it supports backends and endpoints so load balancer can take VMs and VM scale set uh, with application gateway we have a much more advanced much more bigger set of services like VMs, VMSs, app service, IP addresses, and post names. Traffic Manager supports cloud services, app services, app service slots, and public IP addresses. Coming to the network connectivity, uh, Load Balancer is there for both external and internal. External is a public one, internal is an internal Load Balancer. Application Gateway also supports external and internal. Traffic Manager doesn't require internal that makes a lot of sense right because it comes with the dns resolution and you don't need a traffic manager internally for that so that is a completely external service we have put on everything about the certification that you should be knowing about on this 10 week learning path for microsoft azure solutions architect expert certification now on week number first we will be covering design authentication and authorization solutions on week number two, we will be covering design a governance solution. On week number three, we will be covering design a compute solution. On week number four, we will be covering two different things. First, design a non-relational data storage solution and then design a data storage solution for relational data. On week number fifth, we will be covering design a data integration solution. On week number sixth, we will be covering two different things, design an application architecture solution and then design a solution to log and monitor Azure resources. On week number 7, we will be covering design a network infrastructure solution. On week number 8, we will again be covering two different things. First, design a business continuity solution and then design a migration solution. On week number 9th, we will start with the exam preparation and project work. On week number 10th, we will cover job preparation and interviews questions. If you are interested in this training program, I would highly recommend you to go and attend our free class on Microsoft Azure Solutions Architect Certification. To register for this free class, you need to visit k21academy.com forward slash Azure SA02. Now let me show you what we will be covering in this free class. First, we will be looking at why should you learn Azure Cloud, then Azure Certification Roadmap for Cloud Engineers and Architects. After that, we will also be looking at the difference between AZ303, AZ304 and AZ305. We will also be looking at a demo, a live demo on Deploy Azure Container Docker instance. To top it all off, there will be a Q&A session where you can ask whatever doubts you have regarding the certification from my expert trainer. Now, let me demonstrate you how you can register for this free class. First of all, select the event date and time. After that, add your full name, then your email ID, then your phone number, and then click on yes, save my seat. Once you click on this button, you will be redirected to this page. That means you have successfully registered for this free class. If this page is not popped up after you click on yes, save my seat, that means some error has been occurred. You can refresh your page and try to register again. Now I'll see you guys at the free class.
Thank you.